What's up, Fluffle Gang? With the year winding down, I know it's the new year now. This is past me speaking. I got to thinking about MGS and which MGS games I like the best. So here's a completely biased list of the worst Metal Gear game to the best. Note, this list doesn't contain any Metal Gears I haven't played, like Metal Gear Acid, Portable Ops, or Ghost Babble. This video is going to have spoilers for the entire MGS franchise, so you've been warned. Number 9. Metal Gear Solid 4. War has changed. I hate Metal Gear Solid 4 so much. I don't hate any other Metal Gear game, just Metal Gear Solid 4. I was uncomfortable the entire playthrough. From the needless suffering characters go through, Snavid getting microwaved immediately jumps to mind. To characters being out of character, why is Anakon no longer an otaku? To mental health being made a joke and weirdly sexualized with the B&B unit, there isn't a time in MGS4 where I enjoyed myself. The only exception is the Rex slash Ray fight, but who doesn't like giant mecha fights? Old Snake broke my heart, and I winced every time he rubbed his back when he was hunched over for too long. It honestly made me want to stop playing since I thought that was the only way to stop him from suffering. During my playthrough of MGS4, I was told one of the contributing factors to MGS4 being made was Kojima was receiving death threats if he didn't produce another Metal Gear Solid, and boy does the game play like that. MGS4 feels bitter and angry and sad. It has a ton of fan service in it as it shoehorns in every character any fan may have loved from the previous games, Bamp, Mei Ling, Naomi, etc. But most of these characters are done dirty somehow. Raiden's a cyborg, Naomi's betraying Snake again, etc., and it's awful seeing all these characters come back only to have them suffer somehow or be used for plot convenience. The ending of MGS4 is the biggest slap in the face too, as Big Boss comes back at the very last second to steal the show. Big Boss showing up makes the entire game about him, even though he wasn't in 90% of it, and 90% of MGS4 focuses on saving the world from the Patriot AIs. Suddenly, nothing in MGS4 matters as we listen to Big Boss drone on and on about how he was wrong, about what he's done, and how he interpreted the boss's will. The boss had nothing to do with Snavid, other than him having to deal with BB. MGS4 was about Zero's misinterpretation of the boss's will and how he brought the world to the brink of destruction. Not about Big Boss and his own shortcomings. What's worse is Big Boss dies directly after his revelations, rendering them meaningless. So he shows up, makes MGS4 about himself, then dies. Metal Gear Solid 4 made me lose my appetite for Metal Gear Solid, so it has to go on the bottom of my list. Obviously I got my appetite back and that's really thanks to just cause because <laughs> I kept playing afterwards but I swear if I hadn't been streaming I've said this before and I'll say it again if I hadn't been streaming the series at the time Metal Gear Solid 4 would have been my last Metal Gear game number eight Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes Tico, calm down. Calm down. okay Ground Zeroes ranks right above MGS4, so you'd think I hated it too, right? No, I actually kind of feel bad about this one. I don't hate any Metal Gear or MGS game other than MGS4, but someone has to come after MGS4. Honestly, I just haven't played Ground Zeroes enough for it to rank higher. Ground Zeroes has great gameplay and is cinematically gorgeous, but the Phantom Pain takes what Ground Zeroes did gameplay-wise and builds off of it, so the Phantom Pain is a funner game to play. The few times I've thought about exploring Ground Zeroes more, I just pop in the Phantom Pain. Plus, ever since Peace Walker, I hate Big Boss, so if I have a choice, I'd rather stare at Venom's face than Stinky BBs. Ground Zeroes may move up my list if I ever gave it the time of day to play it more. Number seven, Metal Gear. One of the coolest things I've heard about Metal Gear is that there was a whole storyline planned for this game that needed to be scrapped due to the limitations of the hardware. I know the storyline was probably going to be similar to Metal Gear 2's, just because why wouldn't it be? Logically, if you weren't able to do the story you wanted and then suddenly had the ability to in the sequel, you'd incorporate those ideas you previously had to scrap. Because every Metal Gear slash Metal Gear Solid is pretty much a retelling of Metal Gear 2, I can't help but let my imagination run away with itself every time I play. Also, the soundtrack is amazing. Number six, Metal Gear 2. Unlike the first Metal Gear, in Metal Gear 2, we got to keep the storyline intended for it as it was developed with planning for the hardware limitations. Big Boss's speech at the end of MG2 still haunts me, and I think of Snavid shouting at Big Boss that he's nothing like him and loves life all the time. It's so wild to see Snavid go from this rookie operative to Old Snake in MGS4, and it makes Beebe showing up at the end of MGS4 with his stupid speech that much more infuriating. We also get to light Beebe on fire at the end of Metal Gear 2, which should make Metal Gear 2 the top of my list, honestly. Also, it has a banger soundtrack, too. I listen to the Metal Gear 2 OST all the time. Number five, Metal Gear Solid. Did you like my sunglasses? 
Metal Gear Solid is so much fun. I adore Liquid Snake and all his eccentricities and his beliefs about how genes work. Playing Metal Gear Solid after MGS2 and MGS3 meant I got to see a whole new side to some characters I already knew and loved. Old Ocelot was such a treat, though I'm still so disappointed he gave up on meowing. The bosses in MGS1 are also some of the most unique bosses I've ever faced. It still freaks me out that Psycho Mantis can read my memory card. I've never had a boss break the fourth wall to try to get to me, the player, like that. I love what a smooth action hero Snave it is too. Normally I'm not keen on that kind of thing, but I love how unabashed he is and hitting on every woman he meets. It's endearing. What's wrong? Nothing. I just didn't expect a world-class designer of military technology to be so... cute. <laughs> You're just flattering me. No, I'm serious. Well, I know I won't be bored for the next 18 hours. Come on. I can't believe I'm being hit on by the famous Solid Snake. But uh, I'm surprised. You're very frank for a trained killer. Looks like we both have a lot to learn about each other. MGS1's ending is also one of the funnest endings I've ever played through. I love that Liquid just won't die. By the end of it all, it's so overplayed and just the right amount of camp. Number four, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. Down. Hmm. <gasps> okay, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for ranking this above Metal Gear Solid, but I don't care. No Metal Gear game makes me laugh as much as the Twin Snakes does. I do want to say though, it's not that I prefer Twin Snakes over MGS1. Honestly, it depends on my mood on which I prefer to play, but I think about playing Twin Snakes more often than I think about playing MGS1, so it slid in right above the OG. All the voice actors in Twin Snakes also sound like they're having such a good time recording lines for this game too, whereas MGS1, it sounds like they're still finding their voice for their character. Sometimes characters don't even sound like themselves, like when Ocelot drops his voice. And I love all the flips and Matrix moves. I know it's a huge break in immersion when Snavid twirls around with his PSG1, but I adore it. I love when Snavid turns to the camera and nods when Psycho Manus tells us to put the controller down. It's so adorable, and it makes me laugh every time seeing Sneva tell us it's okay. Put your controller on the floor. Put it down as flat as you can. No game makes me laugh quite like Twin Snakes does. Number three, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Snake, the sunsets are so pretty here. Are you feeling okay, Kaz? Peace Walker was a little bit hard to place for me. Its gameplay is tough and bites the player, and it's another sad MGS game like MGS4. What ranked it above Twin Snakes is all the extra missions you can do. I would kill to have ghost missions in MGS5 The Phantom Pain. Could you imagine Venom running around hunting ghosts or trying to do entire missions with a banana? I also really adore those missions where you have to clean up after BB and fold in the soldiers he's knocked out. It's so ridiculous and borderline insulting, but so believable that MSF soldiers would have to follow after BB to extract people and clean up after him. It's nice you get to play as DDs and TPP, but it'd be fun to have side missions where you had to because of something Venom did. Maybe Venom's more professional than BB. I don't know. And as sad as it was, the storyline was captivating. My jaw dropped as soon as I realized Peace Walker was the bad guy of Event Horizon. BB accepting the nuke and Metal Gear and killing Zodornov really stuck with me. This is when I accepted I can't like BB anymore or have him as my favorite snake. Number two, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. The name's Ocelot, big boss. You know who I am. The gameplay is just incredible. Gameplay isn't too big of a factor in whether or not I like a game, so long as it isn't broken. But man, the gameplay in MGS5 TPP just feels so good. Everything clicks and makes sense and feels so natural. It's a game I can relax into and I really appreciate that about it. The buddy system in MGS5 is so great too. I love Quiet so much. She's such a little stinker out in the field. Didi is so OP too and helpful. It helps to have a buddy out in the field since things can start to feel really lonely with the codex so lackluster. The storyline, although it felt slow and disjointed as chapter breaks always come at the worst possible times, was captivating. I wanted to know what was gonna happen next and was getting so frustrated by Venom not reacting to things the way I thought he should. The twist really got me. Figuring out Venom wasn't BB was such an adventure, and when I did figure it out, it caused a lasting phantom pain I still feel to this day. Any game that makes me feel so strongly and still affects me long after playing it always ranks highly in my books. Number one, Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 3. Okay, I'm cheating, and I know I'm cheating, but I just can't decide between the two. Metal Gear Solid 2 was my first MGS game I ever played, but MGS3 followed soon after, and I have such fond memories of both. MGS2 and MGS3 are really when MGS came into its own. Both games have such amazing, well-fleshed-out characters, and the little details really bring both games to life. 
Like in MGS2, Rosemary will yell at you if you start killing seagulls and will also refuse to save for you until you apologize when you have an argument with her over EE. In MGS3, you can chat cuisine in movies with paramedics and what she says about the flavor of things changes depending on if you've tried it or not. Snake can even have a nightmare if he goes to sleep after a paramedic talks about Dracula to him. The characters are all so dynamic and fun. The bosses are also the best in MGS2 slash MGS3. Batman has the best quotes, laugh and grow fat. Fortune has the best theme song that she apparently also performs herself. The end can sneak up on Naked Snake. I don't think anyone else can boast that. The pain controls hornets and has sick dance moves. He should go to Fat Man's party. I bet they get along. Also, I love Raiden. He's such a loser. There's a terminal in front of the elevator, a node. Did you say nerd? Not nerd, node. Oh. I love that his butt is rounder than Snake's because he's less experienced than him, and so he's less toned. That's just so ridiculous. I don't think there's anything I can complain about in either MGS2 or MGS3. I know a lot of people have complaints about like the camera system, but since I played it when I was young, it doesn't bother me. Nothing, nothing in these games bother me. Both games made me feel and think and stuck with me for years and are one of the reasons I got back into MGS and now create MGS content. I love both these games so much. And that's my ranked of worst MGS slash MG to best MGS slash MG. I hope you found it entertaining. What is your favorite? What's your favorite and what's your worst Metal Gear in your opinion? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I really, really appreciate it. We recently just hit 500 subscribers and I cannot express how grateful I am. I can't believe 500 people were like, oh yeah, they're rambling about MGS. I'm gonna subscribe to that. So thank you, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, bell. Join us in Discord, we're always talking about MGS. I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you. <laughs>